Today, uh, with the power of the internet, because we've got a fancy dish on the roof now, uh, all, no expense we spared, uh, we can head to the north of Scotland to speak to Jason and Paul from the Matuga Rum uh, Distillery. Hi. Good Hello. morning to you Hi, guys. Uh, now, Good morning. now, thank you so much for this rum as well. Uh, we're going to have a little taste of this. I said we, but uh, you've not drunk anything in your life before, have you, really? I don't drink. OK, well... But I can taste it if it's in the cake. Don't tell Dad. I'm going to use a little bit of this in the cake. So tell me, guys, how this all started, because a fascinating story about you travelling up to Scotland with the kids in the back uh, with a dream. Great story. So, um, originally from London, my family's from Jamaica. Uh, my grandparents came over to uh, England, uh, part of the Windrush generation, bringing culture cuisine and uh, the national spirit, which was rum. So certainly very familiar with, uh, with sugarcane spirits. So were they, were they, produ were they producers in, in Jamaica or did they work in the rum no, business? No, they were not. My, my, my grandmother, uh, my late grandmother was a teacher, uh, grandpa was a carpenter. One of my other grandfathers uh, owned a, a rum bar um, in Kingston. And my paternal grandmother um, worked in the air. So, but certainly when it comes to family, good times, um, always with a rum punch, a rum cake. Um, you know, rum certainly was our, our family spirit. I see Paul. I see Paul's got a little smile on his face, really, as well. It was probably a good idea that stemmed from that. Oh, how did you feel, Cox? Whose idea was it to take the kids? to drive up to Scotland to, to, to start this business. I mean, where did that come from? Uh, well, I think it was both of our ideas, but uh, as we are married, you know, it was actually her idea. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it was, it was something we wanted to do um, since we started getting into the rum business. Um, I am from Uganda, so rum was definitely not something I really understood. Really all about whiskey. Uh, when I met Jason's family, they told me whiskey is no good. You need to be drinking sugarcane spirits. So I started to explore that and fell in love with, with rum as a spirit. And then we decided we're going to set up a, a rum brand that represents our heritage, which is Africa and, and the Caribbean. It's become more complex now. We're up in Scotland. So there's, there's Africa, the Caribbean and Scotland all sort of melded into one, one, one uh, distillery. So... And we came up to Scotland to really learn the art of distilling. Um, Paul's a civil engineer. My background is corporate marketing. And we needed to learn how to make, make spirits. So the epicentre, really, for education was uh, close to Edinburgh, uh, Harriet Watt University. And uh, that's what really brought us up here. But when you look at whisky and you look at Scotland, there is a massive tradition. There is a formality with it. There is a tradition with it. There isn't such a thing... Would it be right saying there isn't such a thing with rum? People just enjoy it. Yeah, it's certainly a looser category, you know, the etiquette that you have with, with whiskey in terms of how you drink it. And there's a lot more freedom, you know, highly versatile, highly uh, mixable. So how you drink your rum is entirely up to you, whether you want to have it neat on the rocks or in a fantastic cocktail. So, so tell me about tell me about the process of making rum then to, for anybody that that wants to get in their car now with the kids in the back and set up a distillery in Scotland. <laughs> what what do they have to do? We can give you a tour if you like. Go tour on, so you can see what Absolutely, we... let's go for a little tour. Go on, then. Easier, easier when you see it. Um, so if you come over, I'll show you what we do. Everything starts from sugar cane. So rum has to be made from sugar cane byproducts. So there's mainly three. Uh, sugarcane juice, sugarcane syrup, or sugarcane molasses. We use sugarcane molasses, and so literally everything happens in this one space. Literally, molasses come in and rum goes out. So everything is processed from scratch right here. So like all alcohol, it starts with fermentation. So we do our fermentations in uh, uh, tanks, the ones with the blue clipboards. So we'll put molasses in there with some water and some yeast. And so just like any other spirit, you need a source of sugar and yeast and water, and you can create your alcohol. So once the fermentation's done, we have a uh, sugarcane wine, which we then take to distill to create rum. So if you follow me, I'll show you where our stills are. I'm loving this. Is that you? <laughs> Such an intriguing. Yeah. Over here. 
Um, so we've got these 200 liter copper pot stills, very traditional stills. So these two stills will uh, do the first distillation to create a kind of weak rum, if you like. It's a 20% alcohol rum, which we call low wines. Still not high enough for me, we need it a bit stronger, so we'll distill it again. In a intermediate still, this one here. So we'll distill those low wines uh, to around about 40 to 50%. That's quite strong, it seems, but again, still not strong enough. We still want to purify it a bit more. So we'll distill it a third time in this, our final still here, to create our final spirit, which we can technic technically call rum at about 77% alcohol by volume. So what happens to that spirit? I can create a white rum, which you should have a sample of there. We've got a navy strength, and we'll simply reduce that white rum. That, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. We'll reduce that distillate with some super purified water to about 57.5% for our navy strength and 42.5% for our pot still white rum. This really is for mixing, but it is super flavorsome. You can actually drink it neat if you're a pirate. So, um, <laughs> some, peop some people say I am, so I'm going to put it straight in here. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so very flavorsome, a lot of fruity banana notes off the top. It's just a classic rum flavor as a banana and pineapple, I find, as well as some raisin notes in there. So, other products, I'll take you to our, our aged drum, which is what you're using in the cake. That's our golden rum. So that will go into uh, bourbon casks for anywhere between six to nine months. So if you follow me, we'll get back to where the casks are. This is, this is, you, these guys need their own TV programme. Look at this. He's doing all this walking backwards. Look at this. <laughs> I live here all the time, so I know where everything is. <laughs> he lives there. So this is what, tell me what we've got behind us then in these, these barrels. What, what's, what's behind us? So we've got spirit aging for different lengths of time. So for the, the rum that you're uh, using now, it's aged between six to nine months. But we do have some rums that are aging a bit longer. Uh, we've been distilling for three years now. So the oldest rums that we have are probably around about two years, eight or nine months, basically. And how have you found that the, the, the how have you found that the, the 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 public out there, the consumers, taken to it? Is it a growing market, or have you just suddenly boomed in Scotland? How how have you found it? Yeah, I mean, UK craft rum is really picking up. I mean, there's been this whisper about the rum boom for a few years now, but you're certainly seeing a lot more producers entering the space and customer demand. Um, I think during lockdown, the Wine and Spirits Trade Association declared that. Rum was the drink of lockdown. So, you know, there's a lot of consumer interest um, and people exploring different different flavours and styles of rum. Well, guys, I wish you the best of luck with them. I and mean, it's been fascinating seeing it. Um, I've made a wonderful little cake with it that I'm just going to pop in the oven now. And I'm going to sort of top it with a nice little icing and everything else. But stick around because you can see this end bit. But um, I'm just going to finish this off. We've got a nice little bit of buttercream over here. And then I'm going to take some of this pirate rum. But you already added. Oh, you can add it in there. No, I put I put rum in the cake, and I'm putting rum on here. Best way to have rum. Have rum anyway, like in a cake and icing. I just think, to me, when you people look at rum and they probably taste. It sounds crazy, but it's a bit like whiskey. They've probably tried whiskey, and they've probably tried just a standard bog standard. That you know, they're the big production whiskies. When you taste the individual ones like yourselves, it's very very different. I think rum's the same, don't you think? You taste it and it's sort of the, the big commercial ones. The flavours you get from me is the sugars, the spices, everything else. It's much more relevant in this, don't you think? It's true, yes. It's very much more intense. And, you know, the smaller distilleries generally will be doing what we call batch distilling, which is what I've just shown you in an in a individual pot in batches. So you can keep a lot more and intensify the flavours more in, in those kinds of stills. They are highly inefficient, so the big players tend to have more efficient stills, but then... It's lighter, easier to drink, I guess, in some ways, but the flavour is not as intense. So we deliberately selected the style of distillation to keep those flavours as intense as possible. Well, it seems like you've got the perfect team, both of you, really. Um, it's been fantastic. And a perfect team because somebody else is manning the camera as well, so there's definitely three of you there. Um, can I just <laughs> say, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I wish you all the best 
in what you're doing. And what you're doing is fantastic. And from that little idea of whoever it, whoever it was, uh, I'm not going to enter that argument, whether it, whose idea it was to start <laughs> it all off, but it's definitely the right idea and it's definitely working. I wish you all the very best. Thank yes. you. Yes. Lovely. Thank you. So just going to finish off my cake. How fantastic are those? And then we've got a nice little bit of pecan nuts over there. So this is the buttercream on there as well with the pecan nuts. Everything else. That just goes on here. So you've got the bananas caramelised. And then, of course, you've got the coconut, which sits on the top. Hopefully, they're liking this. They're still there. I think this is all right, do you think? It's doing your recipe yeah. justice? Absolutely amazing. I wish we could get a few slices up here in Scotland. <laughs> <Yeah. don't> we? <laughs> I'll have them for you. Yeah, it's a, it's a long way to send it up, but they, they have it, look. you got your... Beautiful. Rum amazing. Cake. There you go. Amazing. Well, thank you for being a part of it, and, and I'll chat to you soon, no doubt. And definitely, when I'm in Scotland, I'm definitely going to knock on those shutter doors. Congrats Thanks with everything. Thanks brilliant, that. Brilliant, that. Yeah. So there you have it, my rum, banana and pecan cake. Done. Easy as that. <laughs>